Well, today on Nation, a window cleaning podcast, we're talking all about what's the point of advertising. We're talking advertising. Why do you advertise? What are we trying to accomplish? So if you're in a small business, window cleaning, pressure washing, anything, make sure to stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from windowcleaner.com, and you are here. What is up? If it's your first time here, you are late to the game, but there is hope for you yet. We've been doing this now for five years every single week and have not missed a week yet. So you have a ton of content, like 130 hours or something, five years of shows. So go back, watch, listen, anywhere podcasts are found, of course, and on YouTube. If you want to have it playing in the background, go back, watch it all. But there's a few of you watching right now who are the cool kids. You know who you are. You're somebody who's watched every episode, or most of them, or a lot of them. You've thumbs up on the videos. You've left me a review on iTunes. But more importantly, shameless plug, you bought your supplies through me. Well, what's up? It is because of you that I could put gas in my car. So thank you. <laughs> thank you for letting me do that. Uh, but yes, I would genuinely, genuinely, genuinely love for you to be my my customer. I want to be your rep. I want to be your guy. That's what I do. So give me a call. Shoot me a text. 862-312-2026. 99% of you put everything in your cart as you're shopping or whatever. And then just text me and be like, yo, Jersey, everything's good to go. Put it in. I verify an address. I push go on it. It costs you nothing extra not one penny more but i make credit and get to continue to live uh with my extremely high um hair gel bill which everybody points out uh but anyway uh i digress but thank you so stinking much for everybody who lets me put your orders in um from the bottom of my heart thank you and we hit a giant milestone for american window cleaner magazine so you're here you're listening to a podcast all about window cleaning. Why not read about window cleaning too? This is a monthly magazine, a real paper magazine that's shipped to your door every single month with articles, with business things, tips, tricks, equipment, and of course the famous sticker sheets that you see always behind me. So yeah, every single month, go to AWC, MAG, get a subscription, and uh, genuinely, again, I know I say this all the time, but any of you who do have this subscription, um, I just want to say thank you. I just genuinely want to say thank you. Um, I've had the magazine now for uh, a year and a half, and it's been absolutely phenomenal. So many of you have gotten the subscription. Uh, it just really means a lot. So thank you. Hopefully you're enjoying the content regardless. But anyway, uh, as I mute my devices here... Um, yeah, so today we are talking about the point of advertising, and I put it out there like this because I think a lot of people know that you're supposed to advertise. Right? There's a difference between marketing and advertising, but what's the point of advertising? What are you trying to accomplish by advertising? Because there's a lot of different things for a lot of different people. That's just absolutely the truth, right? If you're in McDonald's, you're not actually telling anybody new who you are. Right, You're not explaining what you do because everybody inherently knows. Everybody knows exactly what you do. That's the difference between a brand that is uh, almost cultural versus even a brand like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola still has to tell you what they do because they do so many different things. Not just the drink Coca-Cola, but the Coca-Cola company has like Powerade and, and vitamin water maybe. I don't know. I don't know which ones are theirs. But they have a ton of things. I mean, like a hundred different items. So sometimes they need to like remind you what it is that they sell, right? But McDonald's doesn't. If something's new, sure, they'll tell you. But they're on a whole other thing. All they're trying to do is remind you they're there, right? Mainly... Any advertisement, especially what we're doing, is trying to incite a buying trigger. 
Like that's your main goal in advertising in general is to incite a buying trigger. That's what we are doing. We're not McDonald's. We don't necessarily need to stay relevant. Uh, every commercial they put out, they're not necessarily wanting to make a sale from it. They're wanting to stay in the top of your brain when it comes to when you do eat, right? But what we're trying to do is we're trying to incite a buying trigger. We're trying to create something that makes a customer go, I got to get that. Pick up a phone, go online, use your response a bit on your website, whatever, right? We are trying to incite a buying trigger. We're trying to make somebody buy. That's the key. Like, I don't need to make you know who I am because I will never, ever, ever be a nationwide brand. I will never, ever, ever be a statewide brand. I will never, ever, ever be a citywide brand. Now, when I say that, Everybody's like, yeah, right. Everybody knows who I am. I'm the biggest. Yes, I, kill. I know, I know. But what I'm saying is, is that not I everybody like in your um, city will know who you are because not everybody in your city is your target market. There's most of your city that you live in, most, most of your city, will never know your name or care who you are or even go through life knowing there's even window cleaning companies out there. Right? But what we're trying to do is incite buying for the people who do want it. So it's just a whole nother kind of way to think about this because people think of advertising as in, well, I have to advertise so that uh, I make money. But they don't really realize the breakdown of why you're advertising. What's the point of it? Like there's a difference between marketing and advertising, right? Marketing is different than creating an ad. Now, ads can be marketing, but they're different sides to the spectrum. And you have to know what the point of advertising is. Because the big thing is, and I see this so many times, maybe you're guilty of this and it's okay, it's cool. Like, this is why you're literally listening to a window cleaning podcast. Nerd! <laughs> we're all nerds, right? That's why we're uh, better than the rest of us. But... The big thing is, is that when somebody creates an ad, they have to deconstruct the ad in order to make it uh, make sense. And I see a lot of you, not you, but a lot of people out there who create an ad who they try to unconsciously sort of mimic what they see on TV. So they'll put an ad out there. That'll be like, you know, order now and get $50 off. You're not an infomercial. You're not the uh, the 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 magic fishing rod or whatever the whatever the new hype are. You're not a sham wow. You're not um, you know, a, a car dealer or a mattress dealer, right? Well, we're having a Columbus Day sale. Well, all right, neat. So people try to mimic ads that they see and they go, well, this is ads. This is advertising. This is what I do. But it's absolutely not our industry. You're, you're not advertising right. You don't understand the point of advertising. And I'm not ragging on any of you because I've not seen any of your ads locally. I just know that the people I talk to or people I help or whatever, when they come to me and I go over some of the ads, uh, we do a bunch of ad campaign, campaigns and people will send me stuff and be like, hey, I'm looking to get this done. I'm looking to do this. Even at print, sometimes people will send stuff. Some of you have some good stuff. Some of you, when you look at the stuff, you're like, dude, like you'd have to redo everything. Like, what are you trying to go for? You have to like understand what you're trying to go for. And it's buying triggers. What makes people buy your luxury service. And I have a whole um, hark on this, if that's the right word. But I, uh, I really, really beat this one up. But we are a luxury service, right? No one needs their windows cleaned, right? Little old lady with six windows can still have window cleaning. Even if she's on a fixed income, 
she can still do a luxury service, right? That doesn't mean you have to charge a million dollars. What it means is we are a luxury service. It means if she doesn't get it done, it doesn't affect her at all. It might not, you know, she might not have a perfect view, right? As soon as you realize that, it changes everything. It changes how you sell. It changes how people buy from you. It changes how people are triggered to buy from you. It changes your ads. It changes your avatar. It changes everything. So understand the buying triggers come from being a luxury service. So once you understand what a buying trigger is, the why somebody's buying from you, it's not always what you think. Most people go, well, it's because I was uh, cheaper. I had that sale. No, nobody wants a luxury service on sale. People go, well, yeah, that, I get a ton. yeah, okay, that it triggered something, but those are people buying on price. The next guy comes in a dollar shorter, you're going to lose the, it's not a customer for you. It's somebody who's getting a deal, right? Not to say you can't do deals. I'm just saying, understand a buying trigger, understand a customer. A big thing that helps with that buying trigger is making you feel confident. Now, somebody only buys from somebody else when they feel confident and happy with the decision. That is an actual luxury service, of course. There's always somebody whose car, you know, the transmission goes, they bring it in, and they're like, oh, this will be five grand. And they're like, oh, geez, I do not want this. I do not want to spend five grand. I do not want any of this. I have to do this. Buying a transmission in your car that goes out is not a luxury. It's a necessity or you don't have a car, right? Understand that buying groceries is not a luxury. It's a necessity. Where you buy it, maybe. But not that you buy groceries, right? Everybody needs groceries. You have to literally buy groceries or you die of starvation. Or you eat out every day and I don't think anybody does that. Right? So you have to make somebody feel confident. Now, everyone, every single person that is of an adult age has done something. They've gone somewhere and they've talked to a guy and they went, yeah, no, I... I'm going to think about it or no, I'm not really. In, and they'll leave. Well, they left because they didn't want to exchange money for whatever they were buying. Right. Maybe it was something that was gimmicky. Maybe the sales guy was just a, a douche canoe. Right. Maybe. I don't know. Whatever it was. There's a reason that you walked away. You didn't feel confident, confident. You didn't feel comfortable with the sale. Right. But there's also a lot of us who have gone and accidentally sat through a, a pitch or a something and somebody, you know, some guy in the mall, I've, I'm guilty of this. I bought, you know, I think a lot of us have, but you know, those guys in the mall that clean one shoe and then they go, Hey, you want to buy this? Cause now you have one dirty shoe and one clean shoe. They do that because visually it's such an impact, right? They could do a minute or two of work and be like, dang, this stuff is worth it. But what they did was they just cleaned a shoe that hasn't been cleaned or isn't cleaned. It's Nobody's just come back from cleaning their shoes. And if they are, they're not going to do the pitch on them because they don't need to. They can't have a shock and wow, right? So even because their pitch is so good, it made you comfortable with the purchase because you're like, I just saw this thing work. It works awesome. You've seen that guy, right, with the, with the spray and he's like, he's got great, great uh, uh, lines, but he's cleaning everything. And on top of his comedic kind of routine, you're like, dude, that's like just took off some rust, man. This other stuff just did this. Like, it's awesome. You could do that, different things, right? Different cleaners are visually impacted, right? So you have to make somebody feel confident with the purchase. If they feel confident, they want to buy. You could walk into a car dealer and the car salesman is so sleazy. You're like, yeah, I'm not buying from you. This is exactly the car I wanted, exactly the price, but I'm not buying this car from you. I will find it somewhere else. That's because you didn't feel confident with the dude or the check, right? So once you figure out what the point of advertising is, is buying triggers, your point of advertising is to get somebody to that point where they trigger a purchase. The only way they get that purchase is if they're confident with what you're doing, who you are, and what you're selling. I, uh, 
warning, this is not a cocky statement at all. But when I was in window cleaning, and I sold my company, you guys know that. Uh, most of you do, I imagine. But when I would do uh, closing over the phone, I actually, um, I, un- okay, so you should be at a close rate of about 80%. I was closer to 90, 95%. And I just kept raising my prices, thinking maybe my prices must be too low. And then I realized that uh, I just was really good over the phone with people in conveying confidence and being comfortable. It's the same reason that some of you go and say, I will sell 100% of the time if I could just get there in front of them. If I could just get in front of them, they will fall in love with me and buy. That's because you make them feel confident with the purchase. You make them feel comfortable. It's the same thing, though. If you can do that over the phone or you can do that in a website right or anything make somebody feel confident in the purchase here's what we have i'm going to show you everything about it you want to buy a water fed i'm not ever going to sell you on a water fed i could tell you my thoughts i love water fed i couldn't be a window cleaner without it right if here is your tds here's your heights here's your what you want to do here's the best system i think But what questions do we have? I'm not going to sell you on it. I want it to be your decision. But I'm going to tell you everything so you can be confident with a decision. If you're confident that you don't want the the poll, cool. Like, maybe I can help you become confident. What questions do you have, right? So making somebody feel confident is what advertising is. Why does anybody buy anything? Is because they're fixing a pain point, right? Again, Even as a luxury, the pain point is still there, right? I bought this $5 million house on the side of uh, the Beverly Hills, uh, Mountain Hills, whatever. And I overlook the city. Now, those prices are probably way wrong. It's probably like $50 million. But anyway, um, right? And they're going, well, I paid for this view and I can't see the view perfectly because these windows are trashed. They're just so dirty. Well, that's your pain point, right? I got come, my mother-in-law is coming over. I can't ever see that. That's your pain point. Right? I just, you know, they just, it makes the house look dingy. I I really want the light to come. That's your pain point. Find out what their pain point is. Fix a pain point. That's why you sell something. Right? Why do you sell a transmission in a car where the transmission went out? I got to get to work. I got to get my kids to soccer. Fix a pain point. I need a reliable car. Here you go. Here's a warranty on that thing. If anything goes wrong in the next five years on that brand new transmission, if you are not able to get your kids to soccer because of this transmission in the next five years, we'll fix it for free. Don't worry about it. Confidence. Fixing a pain point. My pain point, right, is uh, we'll use window cleaning. My pain point is I got a second floor window that I can't make look good with ladders or a pole, right? I, I had this building. It's a three-story building. What I can't get a lift on every building like that. I want my company to do this. I can't do this. Here's a solution. Feel confident in your solution. Here's how it fixes that pain point. The buying trigger then comes out. That's what you want to do. Okay, this is going to fix my solution. I need to get this, right? Fixing... A pain point is what advertising does. A lot of people just go, price, 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 price. And I get that. You know that you could do whatever you want on price. It's your business. Do what you want. I'm just some dummy that sits in front of a sticker-covered wall, right? So take it with a grain of salt. But if you advertise on price, price is all they see. But we're not a grocery store. We have the lowest prices guaranteed. Well, that's why people shop at Walmart. Walmart is a dumpster fire of a company. I'm sorry if Walmart is watching this. That is my own opinion and solely of my own get sued by Walmart. But they're a dumpster fire. Every time you're in any Walmart anywhere, the floor has got weird like sticker marks and crap and shelves are empty and the people are not nice. and Right? No one goes to Walmart because they choose, well, I am going to go treat myself to some Walmart. Unless you are a redneck, which nothing is wrong with that. Some hillbillies like, well, I'm going to go get sleeves today. (laughs) Right. They sell on price so that 
their image is priced, the low price guarantee. And the reason is, is because everything they sell is a necessity. They always have some extra stuff, right? Look at this junk over here. It's not quality, but it's cheap. No one goes to Walmart because they're, oh man, I really need a, I need a nice suit to impress the CEO of this. No one goes to Walmart, right? Understand you're creating this brand for your company. Fix a pain point. Speaking of brand, brand recognition is another reason to advertise. A big thing is that you will never, never have brand recognition above 5 or 10%. Never. Now, we see our world like this. So we look at it and go, well, all these customers call and know me. They've known me for years. I'm the biggest window cleaning company. I'm the most well-known window cleaning company. Everybody knows me. No. Every one of your customers don't even know you. There's a lot of your customers who don't even know you are you. They're like, oh yeah, I've seen your trucks. Or, oh, right. Not every one of your customer knows you because you're getting new customers still. Now look at the percentage of how many people you have. What do you have? See, you have a thousand customers. High five. That's amazing. But you have a thousand customers. How many people are in your town? How many people are in your city? Just your city. Not even your 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 work area right if you have a hundred thousand people in your city and a thousand people are your customers we'll just say every one of those thousand people know you that's one percent that's really phenomenal if you had one percent brand recognition but what we want is to become a familiar brand to those people who want or need our service that's a, like a long way of just saying is that we want to be relevant to people who are relevant to us. Make a t-shirt out of that, right? We want to be relevant to the people who are relevant to us. And I always say this because brand recognition is one of those things that I want my logo, my colors, my color theme, my everything to create a familiarity, big words, huh? Whatever. I want to be familiar to people who were going to be customers. I want somebody who has always gotten their windows done. I want somebody who maybe is thinking about it or somebody who doesn't even know they're thinking about it. When they do think about it, I kind of come up. They search it. They find me number one on SEO because... You know, I'm awesome at SEO. I use Monk, so Monk SEO is technically awesome, not me. But anyway, but I want to be first. I want to be found. I want when somebody clicks it, I want the logo, the feel, the color scheme, the everything to be like, oh, yeah, I know these guys. I see their trucks all over town. I may only have one truck, but it's wrapped perfectly. I do EDDM so that people are seeing the exact same thing that's wrapped on my truck. Now, all of a sudden, those two things match. My website looks like everything else. Now, those three things match. You can create brand recognition on a very small scale, but I know that this works because it gives you street cred. I had, this is the first time somebody did this. I was in business for maybe six months. And this lady, she's like, oh, man, I'm so glad I got scheduled with you guys. You know, it's... Uh, I'm really, really glad that 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 you could you could fit me in and everything else. And I'm like, oh, yeah, no, definitely. You know, we're I always love new customers. She's like, I see all your trucks all over town, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, I gotta get my windows clean. I gotta get my windows clean. And I'm like, I've been in business six months. We just got our first work truck that was actually had it wasn't even wrapped. It just had like vinyl on it. And uh, we just got that like three months ago. And this lady sees all my trucks all over town and she has forever. Like All that means is something on my truck triggered with her that every time she saw it, it was familiar. This is before I did advertising like I did and you know, all this other stuff. But it just made me open my eyes and be like, whoa, whoa. Like I'm becoming not a household name. But I'm becoming something that somebody can recognize. That's what you're doing with your business. That's why your trucks all look the same. 
if you have more than one. If you have one, it is done right and proper. Don't make a billboard. Your apparel, every one of your employees looks exactly the same. Your website looks just like your truck wrap. Your EDDM, your mail, your postcards and flyers, brochures, five ups, all that looks the same. When you see one piece, you instantly know what it is because subliminally you've seen it before. Brand recognition. It just means that you convey the same message across all platforms. And when somebody sees one piece, it triggers their brain into thinking they know you because they've seen other pieces. And I talked about relevance, but in everything, advertising is staying relevant. Now, I would 1000% rather advertise and make sales. I want to advertise and get purchases. That's why we advertise. I get that. But stay relevant. Companies who don't advertise, which is a lot of you out there, it's totally cool, right? People go, I mean, I haven't advertised in five years. It's just word of mouth. Cool. Well, your growth then is capped at your word of mouth. It's all passive, meaning you have zero control over that. Yeah, you could do a good job, but you have zero control over if they actually tell somebody about how great of a job you did. And that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. But to stay relevant to new people, That's where brand recognition comes in. That's why your website looks like it does. That's why you're on the first page of Google and in the reviews, you have more reviews than anybody. You have all the stuff that makes people want to look at it so that they can see that you're there. If you just close your website, say you're not doing SEO, say you're doing it yourself, Say you're, um, you know, you, you went to Wix and you built your website and hey, I got a website. And no one's finding it. You're not advertising. You're not staying relevant to anyone. You're not. You know Hardee's is still a restaurant? Some of you do. Because you see a big sign if you drive by it. You remember Hardee's? Hardee's used to have commercials. They don't have commercials. that restaurant becomes less relevant because they don't. They're not staying in front of you. You remember Ponderosa? Are they still around? Everybody goes, well, the one closed in my area. Yeah, but you don't know if the company's still around. They're not advertising in your area if they're not in your area. So they're not staying relevant to you. But does the restaurant still exist? If you got one in your area, if you do comment, Just comment if you remember Ponderosa. If you've made it this far and you're watching on YouTube, just type in like, I love Ponderosa. (laughs) People will be really, really confused. Anyway, you have to stay relevant. Just stay relevant to the people who may be customers. If somebody may be a customer, you want them to think of you. All advertising is, is creating buying triggers because somebody feels confident and it fixes a pain point. Creating advertising, even if they're not at the point of buying, creates brand recognition and relevancy. So that when they do have a pain point, you can make them feel confident in buying. That's advertising. Anyway, I hope you're advertising. It's coming up on the busy season again. uh, As you're watching this, uh, no, this week, next week, after the show comes out, the huge convention is going on. So if you're going to be in Nashville for the huge convention, please say what's up. Screen, be obnoxious. I listen. I gotta tell you the truth. I'm gonna be at the show with Stevo and uh, everybody else. I just want uh, to be cooler than Stevo. So make sure you come say hi uh, to me either way. Um, but yes, that's the show. Uh, if you haven't yet, let me be your rep. I am a shameless plug person, and I apologize, but the reason I do all this content is to help. The secondary reason is so that when it comes time that you need to buy something, you think of me. I stay relevant. Ooh, huh? Uh, No, but my number is 862-312-2026. That's a cell phone, so text me anytime. Call me. If you got questions, i love to do that too, but I want to put all your orders in. That's what I do, you know? Also... 
get the American Window Cleaner Magazine. AWC Magazine is the absolute best magazine for window cleaners. Uh, this magazine has actually been around since 1986. We changed the format. I changed the look. I changed the inside. I changed that there's sticker sheets. We changed a ton. So if you know the old magazine, you don't know the new magazine. But it's absolutely amazing. Go to awcmag.com. Do me a favor. It's like 69 bucks for a year. By the way, when you're not a, a giant uh, magazine, it actually costs a lot to send these things. It's like, Anyway, um, go get a subscription. Do it because I see every subscription that comes in. And I want to see your name come across. Be like, oh my gosh, you did it. So go do that. Um, awcmag.com. And uh, until next week, go out there and advertise. But more importantly, be epic.